Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Footprints. My name is Mr. Davis. I'm an educator and a leadership teacher here at Beverly High School. And today on this podcast, uh, we are, uh, we're going to find out who you are. Um, and who we are are two students with me today um, from Beverly High School. It, first, it, to my left is Sophia Salmon. She's a sophomore, and she is in my leadership class. And to my right is uh, my guy, Wilson DeLeon, who is a senior here at Beverly High School. And we're going to get to know these guys uh, today. So first things first, um, because it's interesting that we're here talking about a bunch of different things, and I notice you guys have a lot of different interests. This is great. So first thing with Sophia. Sophia, she likes music. What type of music do you like, Sophia? Um, it's hard because I listen to like, like all like different like types of music. I don't really have like a genre of which one. Um, I mostly listen to Spanish music. Ah, Spanish. So tell us why you listen to Spanish music. I was raised in a Dominican household, so you know, that's all I would hear. You know, especially that Saturday and Sunday when you would wake up. You know, hearing it, getting ready to clean. You know, that's just that's what was on. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, in my house, it was a little bit different. My mother would clean to, like, I don't know, the Temptations and uh, all kinds of stuff. And that's old school music. But no. That's a little bit different. You would hear bachata, merengue at, like, 7, 8 in the morning. That's what I would wake up to Saturday and Sunday morning. I like that. I like And that's that. how I knew. Time to clean. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Wilson, do you have a favorite type of music, by any chance? I'm open up to any kind of music. As long as it makes you move, exactly. you're good with that. Huh? Yeah. All right, I like that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, um, now you do. Wilson is a senior here at Beverly High School, and uh, he was a four-year uh, starter on a varsity sport. What was that? What did you play? It was soccer. Played soccer. Tell us a little bit about the experience of soccer playing here at Beverly High School. You know, it was a little crazy because before coming to Beverly, I used to be in Gloucester, and all the time I would be, I would always be asked, hey, do you know an Edgar de Leon? Do you know an Edgar de Leon? They would always think I was related to him, and I never knew him. I came to find, find out the first day of tryouts, Edgar de Leon, who is he? He was my head coach, and, you know, it was crazy that after a few injuries, you know, I had my knee problems, I came and I tried my best. I tried my best. I gave him my get, my best shot, and luckily, I secured a spot. It worked out, right? So tell us a little bit about your knee problems. I noticed you 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 did something to your right knee specifically. What did you do? Uh, I believe it was eighth grade year, start of eighth grade year. I tore my ACL, lateral meniscus, and MCL. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when you do what you do a big time, huh? You don't mess around. <laughs> so that is a, a a crazy injury to come back from. But before that, you, you got you, you got hurt. You were on a trajectory. You were going up as far as the sport goes. You had done something that was pretty significant. What were you going to do? And in, in, uh, <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah. The year I got hurt, sadly, um, I was supposed to go to Portugal and Spain to try out to, for a few professional soccer teams. Imagine that. Wow. And then so... It's, it's interesting because, you know, sometimes just fate has a way of playing a hand and kind of dealing it, dealing these cards to you. And you're like, okay, wait a minute. Now I got to kind of reassess and rethink what I'm going to do. We're going to get back to that in one second. No problem. What I want to ask Sophia is interesting because <laughs> on her list, she has singing. And I want to know, do you take singing lessons? Did you take um, singing lessons? When I was, so one thing about like, my house my mom made sure, like, she wasn't going to raise uh, an iPad TV kid. Like, my mom, like, allowed me to explore the world. Like, I was always a busy kid. Like, I had cello practice. I had saxophone practice. Like, I had gymnastics practice. Like, I was always a really active kid. And, yes, there was a point where I did take singing lessons for a couple months when I was maybe, like, eight, nine. Wow. But even before I took singing lessons, singing, I just, I, I just always had. Like, singing was just... It just came to me. We def I definitely had got my voice from my dad, 
for sure. My mom can't sing <laughs> for the life of her. <laughs> She's probably like me. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. So you She know can't sing, but she can sure dance, that's yes. for sure. Yes, I definitely got my dancing genes from her. Oh, but no doubt, no doubt. Even I see videos, like, when I was a little girl, I was like three, four, maybe even younger, I was singing. So like, singing was just something I've always have done. Like, I just, I don't, I don't even remember when I started singing. It was just... You just started doing it and having a good time. Exactly. So I have a little singing story. My daughter, her name is Carrington. Uh, she's now 24 years old, but she went to The Voice when she was like 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's very interesting about that is um, I, we didn't know she could sing. It was like <laughs> completely out of the blue. You know what I mean? And uh, it was nice to see her follow her dream. And that's what you guys are doing today. That's why we're trying to find out who you are. You're following the path or the career path that was set upon by someone maybe placing a footprint on you. Because that's what this podcast is all about. Talking about footprints and moving it forward. Right? So, tell us. You had your surgery on your knee. Right, Wilson? And then, after you had your surgery on your knee, you had to do what? I had to persevere and, you know, not let that take me over. I had to really overcome the fear of playing a gun, to overcome the fear of, you know, reaching your goals. Just like you said, my dream ever since I was little was to become a varsity athlete my first year of high school. And luckily, it, it wasn't easy, but I made it. Well, see, that's the thing. Anything my, that worth having is always, <clears throat> you, you got to struggle a little bit, right? My parents always used to say that to me, right? If, you, if you're not going to work for it, you're not going to really appreciate it, right? And that's the thing. Appreciating everything we do in our lives and people being in our lives is one of the great, great joys I have anyway. And you guys being here also is a great joy for me as well. Thank you. Let me ask you, uh, uh, Sophia, ROTC was a big thing in your life um, before the leadership class. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about ROTC and what attracted you to ROTC. So... It was eighth grade, and I, I remember that they were getting us ready, you know, for, like, the ninth grade classes. So we had a, a block um, in one of my classes. We had, like, a block specifically just for, like, hey, what classes are you interested in doing? And I have older cousins who went to this school, um, and they did ROTC. Three of my cousins, they did ROTC. And... I was like, oh, I guess. Like, I, I just wanted to try it. I just, like, I just wanted to be a follower real quick, like, kind of follow in, like, my cousin's footsteps real quick. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh. And then I joined, and it was, it wasn't what I expected. Like, it was, it was a weird start. Eighth grade, eighth grade, or at least middle school. I don't miss middle school. I just <laughs> I, I didn't. I do not like. So I the transition not. to high school was a lot easier yes, and better for you. I, I love high school. school. I feel like okay. I'm actually treated like an adult, and I'm not treated like I'm some like little child. I've always been mature for my age. Mm -hmm. Some people thought like I was. It's actually funny. A couple of weeks ago, someone actually thought I was a sophomore in college. Wow. No, I was like, no, sir, I'm a <laughs> sophomore in high school. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I've always just been really mature for my age, and. I feel like middle school, they were just always, like, babying me, and mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like I I was never, I never showed off the person I could be. Right. And I came to high school, and all of that changed, and ROTC played a big part of it, because, like, it kind of, it, it motivated me in doing better in my classes, and also just being a better person mentally and physically, and I've had so many opportunities that I thought I could never have, just on my own, um... They definitely, you know, opened many doors for me, and I've def they definitely helped me, you know, through my darkest times. Like, I got a drill captain only as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. um, I went from, if you're an ROTC kid, you know, I went from PFC, private first class. I skipped, I skipped a couple ranks, and I went straight to sergeant. So it definitely, you know, the more opportunities that I got, you know, from ROTC and, like, the teachers finally realizing... Now, like, oh, wow, like, look at this girl. Like, she's doing really good. It just, ROTC just, it made me a whole better person. And mm -hmm. It made me want to do better, not only for myself, but just 
kind of like, like my future self mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So it gave you like discipline and focus. Exactly. And, and, and something to shoot for. Exactly. You know what I mean? You, you had a goal and you're like, oh, I'm going to reach that goal and I'm going to go up here higher and higher and you just keep climbing. And, yeah. And uh, that's really what life's about. That's what the footprints do. It makes you climb higher and higher, right? So now Wilson, getting back to you, you had to now shift gears a little bit, right? Change the perspective of your life because here you are, a young guy, <laughs> thinking you're going to play professional soccer, right? And now you get hurt. So now that's that adverse part coming in your life. And now, all right, since I'm not going to do that, what did you think about doing next? What was the next thing that you thought would be the, the next adventure in your life, the next thing you thought would, would be connecting the dots, so to speak, for you? Well, for me, it was very difficult to transition. Mm-hmm. But one thing my dad would always say is, hey, have a plan B, mm-hmm. have a plan B. You know, if something go- doesn't go your way, you have a backup. Mm-hmm. So luckily, it took me a while to find something that I could connect to and something that I could really see myself doing mm-hmm. with the passion. So I would love to, in the future, become a state trooper. Yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen? He said he wants to be a state trooper. <laughs> uh, if I get pulled over by this guy, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> that is awesome, um, you know, to, to aspire to be that. And, and so what led you to that? What was, what, what was the thought process behind that? Well, it was... It started off as, you know, you're a normal little kid and you see a cop car and you're like, oh, wow, that's cool. But, you know, throughout the years I dug into it and, you know, I've always liked to be a problem solver and I'd always like to be the change. So the only way that I could help my community and help the people around me, especially coming from a Hispanic Latino family, you know, I would love to make the change inside. Wow. That's that's some forward thinking, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. I love it. I mean, that's how you do affect change yeah. from the inside by starting right there and doing it yourself and getting there. And uh, man, my hats off to you, Wilson. <laughs> that 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 is amazing Thank to you. think that you know, even though I've hit with a little adversity, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and still be able to figure something else out that I want to do. Amazing, love it, Sophia. She said you like food. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like food? Exactly. Right? It's like, I don't know, I feel like food food just like it just fits everything. If you're sad, go eat food. If you're happy, <laughs> go eat food. Like if you're at a party, eat food. Like I just feel like food <laughs> solves everything. You see, food puts like what do you what do you think about food when you talk about food? It puts a smile Probably. on everyone's face. Absolutely. Like he's smiling, you're smiling, yes. I'm smiling. Yeah. It just it makes everyone happy. Just yeah. the smell of it, the taste of it. And plus, I come from a chef. My mom's a chef. And I, I come from a family who's just been in the restaurant business for many years. Nice. So tell us, what are some of the things that you created with your mother? Have you oh, actually nothing. made anything? No. No? <laughs> I'm, I don't cook. She's the I, chef. I, I'm the, t- yeah, she's the chef. You're the taster. I, I'm the taster. Oh, that, I, love, my, I get that. That's my job. But, okay, okay. But like my, I like that. But like... It's not like I'm some judge like Gordon Ramsay out here to say, oh, it needs more this and needs more that. No, I say it tastes good. Uh-huh. It tastes good, so yeah. I'm all, ready to eat it. All the definition she needs. Absolutely. It tastes good. Especially coming from a picky eater who like isn't really open to, I struggle to open up to foods. Yeah. It tastes good. But that's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> Food is it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Food is the thing we, we love. All right? Especially this guy, believe me. Right? Pack it in a little bit. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is that as, as we go through this journey in our lives and, and what I like to talk about in our leadership class a little bit is, is, is how we view ourselves. Like, because without struggle, there's, there's really no victory, right? And that's one of the biggest things we, we have in common. As, as humans, as we're struggling to find ourselves and, and what footprints we're going to leave, perhaps with someone um, that left a footprint on us as well. Um, so who you are are your habits, right? What you do daily. And so one of those things that I, I, I always say is uh, you are who you are no matter who you are, period. And, and that's the end. And so I'm, I'm a guy who is a teacher who loves hip-hop music who loves to coach basketball 
That's who I am. And I've been that my whole life. And what's interesting is my dad used to say, find a passion that you love and you put all your energy into it, it'll never seem like work. You'll always have a good time. The money will follow. Eventually you'll get that. But you're doing it for the love of it. And that's really what the amazing part is. All right. <clears throat> Sophia, tell us a little bit about your hair. Okay. This is a really <laughs> weird one. I was struggling to find one, so that's why I put it. I was like, you that's know That's okay. We like, we like, listen, look. Mr. Davis got the, <laughs> the haircut. In the first two episodes, you see I had an afro. Now, I got the spray. It's really cut. funny. I actually prepared myself for this, for this like, for this, like, question specifically. Because I was like, because... People watching this probably like, what does she got to say about her hair? Like, yeah. it's even, honestly, it's not even about hair. It's just, I feel like teenagers, especially maybe, like, in this generation, they care a lot about, like, how they look, how they look yeah. to people, especially teenagers. Like, sure. like, like you were just, like, holding your phone, like, yo, how do I look? Like, yeah. I feel like, like, people care how they look. And, mm -hmm. honestly, we're in a generation where not, some people struggle to be confident mm -hmm. in their skin and love themselves. And... Honestly, I can't say much about that. I've always been a com uh, a confident kid. My mom used to say, "Oh, honey, you look so beautiful," and my, my younger self used to be like, "I know." <laughs> that was me. <laughs> so I never struggled being confident, but I always did feel like something was missing, mm -hmm. and I never knew what. It's not that I didn't think I was ugly. I just I just thought like something's missing. And funny when COVID hit, you know it took a stroll on everyone like oh, yeah. everyone had no one knew what to do it was just it just happened out of the blue and you know we were on lockdown and I needed to entertain myself somehow mm -hmm. so like I started like getting into hair and stuff like that and I started like watching videos and teaching myself and I've taught myself many things like I taught myself how to play the piano when I was six years old like That's I've always awesome. I've always been like I'm, I've always been very determined mm -hmm. and so I got into hair, and then I started not only doing my own hair, but I started doing, like, my mom's hair and my friend's hair, and I realized that it was something that I actually really liked, and it was something that, like, I was able to do, and I, what I loved most about it was I could make people love themselves. Because, mm, like, like, people are always like, oh, my hair, like, it's, like, damaged, or it doesn't look good. I got you. Yeah, and I would right. help them out, and it's always nice to see them, like, look in the mirror and be like, wow, like... This looks great, thank you. And like right. they just all of a sudden, boom, you appreciate how you look now. So who knows? Maybe you're a closet hairdresser. <laughs> you never know. You never know. That's awesome. Love it. So Wilson, you said the, uh, you know, you you like to travel. Tell us a little bit. Where have you been? You've been so, in specific? No, yeah. So we've mostly traveled outside the country. Mm -hmm. And we've gone through, you know, my family is from Guatemala, so we, we've traveled to Guatemala every year. I always always end up going to Guatemala. Uh, we've, I've, we've been to Mexico a few times. We've been to Puerto Rico. And there's a, there's a few others on the list that I really want to go to. Nice. So you traveled to Mexico. You said Guatemala. That's where your family's from? Yes. Um, interesting. So how did you actually end up in Beverly? Did you, how, did, how did that happen? I know that at one point... You were in Gloucester, because I'm from Gloucester. Hello, mm -hmm. folks. Uh, I live in Gloucester, and uh, my wife is from there. Her family actually owned a restaurant many, many years ago, and she grew up there, and oddly enough, so did I, <laughs> 33 years in. But anyway, how did you end up being, um, coming from Guatemala and then being here in Beverly at this particular time? So luckily, um, I was born here in Beverly. Oh, okay. But my parents came here at a very young age. Mm. Um, struggled, fought, and, you know, everything that I am today is thanks to them. Um, you know, they went through the same process my dad did. My mom was more fortunate and came here, you know, through a plane. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they met. We started off in Gloucester, and then sooner than later, we got the opportunity to move to Beverly, and we didn't think about it. We came straight here. How great is that? So... Thinking of the, the way where you were when you were little, the footprints and the work ethic that your parents instilled upon you, you're going to take that and carry that over when you actually graduate this uh, this June, May or June. I forget what it is. I don't know. Mr. Davis gets a little nutty sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, 
uh, Wilson will be graduating this year, and we're definitely going to miss him. And uh, we definitely love who he is and who he's become and who he will continue to become. Thank you. Uh, no doubt. So um, you mentioned high school, Sophia, that you really enjoyed high school. Yeah. What about high school do you enjoy the most? Um, I'm an ADHD kid, okay. so it definitely feels nice to be free and be independent and walk around. I feel like middle school, I just felt really trapped. Like, it just, I don't know. I just felt really trapped in middle school, and it just, I, I didn't like the person I was in middle school. So coming to high school, I definitely felt free mm. and like, oh, a new start, you know, because there's obviously things I'm not proud of that I've done in my past or situations that have happened in my past. By the way, that's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it felt nice that it felt like, like a new beginning coming to a new school sure i was a little nervous but like hey new opportunity so that was kind of just my mindset like new opportunity Absolutely. and i'm honestly glad because I, I like high school i feel like i'm more free um i'm free to make my own choices i'm free to walk around like i feel like the teachers here are really understanding and they definitely understand a high school brain or high, high schoolers brain yeah for sure I think being in, in your shoes many, many years ago, me being a high schooler, um, I can definitely sort of empathize and sympathize with, with the way that things go. Um, and so me having had that experience already, I can draw back on that and be like, you know what, I kind of know what he or she is going through. So I'm mm -hmm. able to sort of draw on that and be like, yeah. okay, I got that experience. I get it. I understand. You know what I mean? I want to ask this question to both of you. Who are the people that you look up to specifically? I'll let you go. Wilson. <laughs> That's a tough one. If I could name every family member I have, I would. But the people that um, I admire the most has to be my parents. Has to be my mom and my dad. Like I mentioned, they've given me everything that I, I mean, the person that I am today is thanks to them. They wow. persevered, they've been, they've been the right, um, person that I would love to be in, you know, when I have my kids. Yeah. I would like to be the parent that they were with me. That's awesome. I mean, you got to do that. You always got to pay it forward, so to speak, right? So my parents left a, a footprint on me in terms of how I was going to ra raise my seven kids. By the way, I have seven kids. <laughs> uh, uh, four boys and three girls. So, um, and that's really what's important is being able to push that forward Right, them leaving a footprint on you, and you're like, oh, I'm going to take that and I'm going to move that forward, and maybe leave a footprint on somebody else that'll help them through maybe a tough time or whatever it is that they're going through, right? Because that's really what it's about: us being here together, sharing our stories, and letting people know out there they're not alone, right? They might have a similar situation that they're in, and they're like, you know what? Oh, I'm all by myself. I don't know what to do. And guess what? You're not. We're, we're here to help you here at VHS. That's what we do. I can tell you who I look up to mostly is my parents for sure. But my grandfather was really cool. My grandfather was his name was his nickname was Cookie. Hey. All right, so you got a cool nickname like that. Who else can you be? But uh, he was really kind of my guy, and he'd tell me all kinds of stories about the war and about fishing and and all kinds of stuff. And I just uh, you know he was left a footprint on me in regards to how to be just a nice human being, how to how to treat people, right? How you want to be treated. That was one of the biggest things that he did for me, and uh, I love to pay, pay that forward and kind of move that along, you know, forward. Um, one other thing I would like to say is these two wonderful people have generously donated their time to be here today, and I appreciate that um, because a lot of times, you know, we get busy in our lives and, we don't make time for really stuff that's important. I feel like this is an important aspect of getting your messages out yeah. to those folks in our BHS community and, and or, our, you know, our community here at Beverly, period. And it's really important to be able to do that, right? Uh, really important. Good um, to be here. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Okay, so uh, one other question. So I'm thinking you've traveled. Have you traveled? Um, eh, no, not like I went to Puerto Rico for my birthday 
when I turned, like, when I was turning 16. Because we were going to have a party. And my mom, I remember, my mom picked me up from a friend's house. And our plan, like, usually, we, like, you know, it, it, well, during summer, we go to, like, Water Country or, like, Six Flags. It was somewhere fun. Mm -hmm. So she was like, we're not going to Six Flags this year. Like, during the summer. And I was like, what happened? Like, oh, no. Like, I'm, I'm so what mad happened? because I was ready to have the time of my life in Six Flags. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And she told me, she was like, I'm going to do something better for you. She was like, I'm going to give you a Puerto Rico trip for your birthday. And I was like, oh, I get to miss school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I, How great is it that? Was, it was only one day of school. It was a long weekend. Still. But it, Four day vacation. Right. I was living the dream. Yeah. And I traveled to. My family's from DR. My mom's side of the family, they're um, Dominican. Mm -hmm. I went to DR once when I was like five, six, and I, I I do I remember a good portion of it. But I was young, and my mom when my mom surprised me with that Puerto Rico trip, and as soon as I came back, I was like, man, <laughs> I, I really wish I was back in Puerto. <laughs> it was freezing here. It was so cold, yeah. but the the food was good. Everyone was so nice there. Like I, I like to say like people from Massachusetts, they're a little grumpy. <laughs> they're they're a little so, just so a little, little grumpy. Little. So going to Puerto Rico, it was like these it. people are so nice. It it just it was a it was a good environment to be in. Honestly, I'll tell you, traveling is is wonderful. Um, the last place I went to was Vegas. By oh, the way, wow. I, I don't recommend staying staying any more than three days in Vegas because <laughs> otherwise you lose your shirt. But uh, we had a good we had a good time, uh, my wife and I. That was one of the one of my many many uh, I wouldn't say many trips, but I mean I went to Jersey. Notice there's a, a gambling theme here. Not, <laughs> not that we gamble or anything, but you know what I mean. But yeah, we went to uh, Jersey and it was like uh, we went to all these different places and it was fun. It was fun. So. Um, Thinking about forward thinking just now, Wilson kind of has a plan as to what he wants to do with his life and where he wants to go and where he wants to take it. I ask you, Sophia, what do you want to be or who do you want to become in the next three to five years with your life? Where do you want to take it? What do you want to do with it? Um, well, when I was talking about ROTC and like saying how like it definitely like made me the person who I am today and like, ever since, like, like my freshman year, I knew, like, because I always, like, I feel like every kid did this. Like, they switch up, like, oh, I want to be a police officer, or I want to be, like, mm -hmm. hairdresser, like, whatever. Like, they always, like, switched on topics. That was especially me. I went from, like, wanting to be a singer in kindergarten to wanting to be a gymnast in, like, elementary school, middle school, wanting mm -hmm. to be a gymnastics coach, and then wanted to be a hairdresser at some point or, like, be a person who's, like knows a lot about hair well and what's interesting is all those things you are <laughs> yeah. that's who you are right and the same thing with you you're a soccer player who might be injured but now you have the foresight that you want to now be a police officer yeah how great is that and then like but like one thing is like i got bored of all of those things mm -hmm. like i never like had something i can like fully like commit to right. and then when i joined rotc i was like oh no this is cool like I, I, I'm not getting. There's no way I could get bored of this. No way. So I want to join the military. Oh, excellent. I want. So now look at that. Now you have the yeah. foresight to do that. I either want to um, go to the army or marines. And um, even if I don't make it my career, I'm just interested in just making it kind of just like a stepping stone. Just like kind of just mm -hmm. wait till I'm stable mm -hmm. enough to be independent. Well, you listen. Those are all great aspirations, and thank you guys for being here today. Um, we're running a little bit long, but that's okay. Um, I just want to thank Sophia Salmon and my guy Wilson DeLeon for being here today. My name is Mr. Davis, and uh, I'm a leadership teacher here at VHS, and hopefully you enjoy getting to know who they are. And now the question is, who are you? Thanks. You guys have a good night, and we'll talk to you later.